Hi everyone, this is Jeff of Tell Flare Mouse. Today we're going to introduce you to the FK Burno PSD chambered in the proprietary 7.5 FK round. Since this handgun and cartridge are so new to everybody, I thought it'd be interesting to compare it to the ballistics of just a normal 9mm handgun. Later we'll compare it to other calibers based off what you, the viewer, want to see. Alright, welcome back Tau Flater folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you today with something a little bit different. Actually, it's quite a bit different than what we normally do. We were recently contacted by FK Burno. FK Burno is a company now in Gainesville, Florida. They asked if we would test out one of their new 7.5 PSD pistols. You've probably seen this in some other YouTube videos. It's not the first one released in the US, but we're definitely one of the early ones to get it and test it on film. Uh, Burno Factory has been making firearms in Czech Republic since 1918. And uh, they're a very old firearms maker. They've been making high quality rifles and shotguns all over Europe and Africa for 102 years. But they've started making a, what they call their PSD pistol. And um, they've started importing them through their, their uh, company in Gainesville, Florida. So they sent us this pistol to test out. It comes with some wild little rounds here. These little 7.5 millimeter rounds. It's kind of like a little rifle round. It's essentially a 10 millimeter round that's been squeezed down to a 30 caliber bullet. And they're advertising the ballistics on this thing to be similar to what you would get out of one of those short little AK-47 pistols. So they're saying that this round's traveling down range at 2,000 feet per second, that it's hitting at 100 yards at 1,500 feet per second, so it's staying very hot very far, and that it's hitting down range at 850 foot-pounds of energy. That's crazy. That's better than our 10 millimeter rounds here. It's hitting hotter at 100 yards than 10 millimeter does even at the at the muzzle, and it's um, it's going to be a great hunting or backpacking or whatever kind of pistol you want. This pistol's not a small pistol. It's not for concealed carry, as you can tell. It's a rather large frame and a large handgun. I brought out here with me today two of my largest guns. I have a Glock 20 and 10 millimeter, and you can see there that it's it's bigger than the big old fat Glock 20. It's longer, longer in the nose, longer in the butt. And then I also have with me a Smith & Wesson 45, M&P 45, also a big gun. And you can see that it's, this 7.5 FK pistol is bigger than that. So not a tiny little gun, but again, this is not made for concealed carry. This is kind of designed around being able to take it out hunting or um, for personal protection. The round was actually designed, the pistol was actually designed for uh, security contractors in the Middle East who wanted something between their sidearm and their rifles to engage targets out to 100, 150 yards, a round that still had a little oomph down range. And uh, so this thing way outperforms a 9mm and a 45, but it's not as ungainly as holding a, a full M4 style rifle. So that's kind of the niche they're trying to fill with this round. Here's a cool feature about this pistol. With the very easy removal of the slide, you can swap out barrels. They send with this pistol a 10 millimeter barrel. So 10 millimeter is widely available in the US and even better, 40 caliber rounds, you can find them everywhere. I happen to have quite a few 40 caliber rounds. They can be shot out of this 10 millimeter barrel safely. The factory act advertises that. Glock says don't shoot 10 millimeters out of their, don't shoot 40 calibers out of their 10 millimeter barrels, but I do it all the time. FK, FK Bruno says, you can go ahead and shoot 40 caliber out of our 10 millimeter barrel all day long for cheaper practice. And we're gonna compare it with a nine millimeter. I have a Glock 19 out here with me today that's got some hollow point rounds. So we're gonna shoot some of these 7.5 millimeter hollow point rounds uh, right alongside the Glock 19 and then see how the, the damage down range compares. So stick with us and uh, I think you're gonna like it. All right, we're going to test and see what a 9mm jacketed hollow point does to this 1 inch aluminum plate donated by Ray K. Thank you, Ray. 9mm over here on the left, and then we're going to compare it to one of the 7.5 FK rounds on the right. Let's give it a try. Okay, 9mm. Uh, when you are ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I'm ready. ready? Woo. 
So nine millimeter made a little mark on there on the on the aluminum plate. We didn't expect it to do a whole lot, and it didn't. Look at that 7.5 FK round. That thing dug in there pretty deep. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Filmed at 9,000 frames a second. Here comes the 9mm. A 9mm is certainly no slouch of a round. Now this is traveling around 1150 feet per second. Now, let's compare that to the 7.5 FK. This is traveling 2,000 feet per second. It is a lighter bullet, but at that higher velocity, it does a lot more damage. Lead plate! World's famous. <laughs> World famous. <laughs> World famous pea soup. Okay, nine millimeter on lead plate. Nine Hit it. Nine millimeter, here we go. Okay, FK Bruno. I'm ready. ready. When you are. I'm ready. Oops. Pretty much put that one right on top of the other. <laughs> You're too accurate, that's your problem. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> We want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. You just took it a little too side literally. On side, yes. Yeah. The top one was a nine millimeter, and I kind of ruined it by putting the seven point five right on top of the nine millimeter. But you can still see the difference in the depth. Nine millimeter dug in there. I don't know what is that quarter inch or so, and that seven point five, that thing burrowed in there. That's but it, three, it, three it, quarters it, of an inch deep. But it gives you a, 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 a pretty good appreciation for that big hole there from our. Uh, you know, Alexi's extreme penetrator slug. Yeah. It shows you handgun stopping power versus a 12 gauge. Yeah. And the things that a 12 gauge will get through when trying to get to a bad guy versus a pistol too. So, and then we happen to find here on the ground a still warm 7.5 FK round all squished up. Now the biggest difference between the 9mm and the 7.5 FK is the 9mm more or less just put a dent in the plate. Whereas the 7.5 FK dug in a lot deeper, cratering the plate and ejecting a lot of lead fragments from the plate. Okay, Kevlar, what? Nine millimeter versus seven point five on Kevlar. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Left side of the range word there. Okay, gotcha. I'm ready. Here we go. So we smacked him where we wanted to. The seven point five FK round is advertised to be able to penetrate level 3A body armor even out to 100 yards. That one made it right through this level 3A vest. Wow. There's nothing there. This was a uncompromised portion of his t-shirt. So, where, 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 where'd the 9 millimeter go? I mean, well, before yeah. we forget about that. 9 millimeter hit right here. Actually, it's right underneath there. In this test, we can clearly see the differences in velocities between the two bullets. The 7.5 FK arrives much sooner. It would have been really interesting to see how their F5 solid copper bullet would have performed against the vest. But I think they forgot to send us a box of the F5s to demonstrate. Okay, let's see what a 9mm does to a pumpkin. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, here we go. Whoa! They had some inside, water. <laughs> The 9mm jacketed hollow point actually did quite well against our water-filled pumpkin. It created a lot of hydrostatic shock which just ruptured the pumpkin. Okay, FK Bruno. Ready, ready when you are. Oh, there's flies. We're going to see some flies launch. Oh, goody. You ready? I'm ready. What? Now that was a surprise. What the heck? What the heck happened? So we're a little surprised. I guess because the round, this was a jacketed hollow point round. But remember, it's flying at 2,000 feet per second versus the 9 millimeter. So I think it just hit him so fast and hard that it passed right on it through. It was full of water. I, I filled it up myself. Yeah. It's still mostly full of water, but it exited out the back of his biscuit right there. Yeah. 
What if he shot really low or so? I, I know it was full. I'll try it lower, but here's also what we're gonna try. The FK, the, the 7.5 FK uh, rounds also include this, uh, what do they call it, nose discarding. It's a 95 grain, all copper, nose discarding round. So this is supposed to shear off those pedals and send a core through him. So okay, okay. Let's give that a try and see if it does anything it's, different. Yeah, and she, you know, she maybe shoot the mouth. Not much has leaked out of it, right? No, it's no. still full of water? Got most of his water in there. Okay, it's and we self, got a lot of flies. It's a self-sealing pumpkin. Flies really like that. Yeah, they like pumpkin spice. Might uh, see some fly uh, gymnastics. <laughs> Ejecta. Now I guess if you want to blow up pumpkins, 9mm is the caliber you want to use. The 7.5 FK traveling so fast, for whatever reason, just did not create that same hydrostatic force that we saw in the 9mm. But the pumpkin was full of water and it had enough force to kick that little plug out. Fortunately, we have enough pumpkin left to do another test using the FK 7.5 F5 round. lower a little more fluid up above the bullet tore a little bit bigger hole in there look at these weird pumpkin fibers in there and of course we got an exit wound out the backside a little more tearing with that round that was the nose discarding all copper round yeah and that flew out there in the background somewhere but I think because they're moving so dang fast they're just not walloping that uh, fluid in there yeah it's it's if we tried well we've done this before with a slug 45 rounds I mean, big giant splash, so it's just zipping right on through. Yep, and there's a lot of flies over there. It's pumpkin fly season. Oh, okay. <laughs> In this test using the F5 cartridge, we had a little better results, kind of similar to the 9mm, but boy, we were really hoping to send pieces of pumpkin in a 50-foot radius. I guess we've gotten a little spoiled after testing so much 12-gauge exotic ammunition. Okay, so we got a pork shoulder butt. I don't know how that works in anatomy. Nine millimeter on the left. Yep. Okay, ready. Right through. With this piece of Velociraptor here, we hit it with a nine millimeter right here. And because it's frozen in the center, I was able to slice right down the middle of the wound track. And you can kind of see the nine millimeters little path through there. And it exited right out the back. Okay. Did not hit any bones or anything. I don't know if there's any bones in oh, there. Oh, the flies are really happy over there. But, so, now that this piece of meat's compromised, let's go over here and try a 7.5 on the right side. Okay, good luck, flies. Okay, 7.5. Those are the regular hollow points, right? Yes, back to a jack of the hollow point. Okay, gotcha. Wow. That's a big difference there. This thing was up like this. 7.5 round hit there. You could probably tell better than we can on the uh, slow motion, but it blew this entire piece of meat back here, almost blowing the whole back of the chunk of pork off. So, a lot of damage right through there. You can almost see the glass as it tore its way through and exited out the skin side. So, we could assume that this is going to be pretty good for hunting. Uh, Wild boar, deer. The, they, uh, they have a bunch of different types of bullets too, right? Yeah, yeah, they have three different types of bullets that are commonly found in the U.S. The FK Burno factory advertises this round as point of aim, point of impact at 100 yards. That's why when we're aiming today, they're actually striking a little bit low because these are designed to be a hunting round out at 50, 75, 100 yards. So pretty impressive to have that kind of energy that far down range for hunting purposes. So, if you're in Europe and you're watching, when you buy this pistol, it actually comes with a little arm brace that snaps on. In the U.S., you'd have to buy that separately, where legal. But in Europe, if you buy this same pistol, it's going to automatically come with a little snap-on arm brace to make it almost like a small rifle. Yeah, That's that'd actually, be very, very useful. Yeah, definitely helps in those long-range shots. So. Yeah. Pretty dang cool. Let's try some clear ballistics gel and see if we can't. Yeah, get a I'm gonna picture. wash this table off because there's. Why? There's nothing on it. Millions <laughs> of flies. I think you'll agree that a meat target is a more realistic, real-world target 
the 9mm jacketed hollow point Federal HST round penetrated completely, but the 7.5 FK jacketed hollow point penetrated completely and just tore the heck out of the meat. Huge difference in damage. Okay, 9mm versus gel. I'm ready. Mind you, we are filming at the diesel range today. You may hear, hear some right. diesel in the background. Yeah, it's the Venn Diesel. The Venn yeah. Diesel Memorial Shooting Range. <laughs> yeah. And he's not even dead. So that's pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> hey, so we were firing some uh, 124 grain Federal HST. Big deal, right, OG? We hit the uh, Joe block. Jeff found the fully expanded round out the back, out there in the dirt. It had out. just enough energy to squirt out the back. And then it, then it landed about 20 feet back there. Made a perfect little expanded round. There is uh, the nine millimeter round, so that's okay. So right through there. Yeah, it's actually okay. pretty impressive for the nine round. Uh, let's try the seven five round in there. We don't expect that this gel block's going to catch it. Right. I mean, it may blow up and, and go in this far or something. You know. Could put some folded Kevlar back there and see if it'll catch it. But this this block of clear ballistic gel is the right size for like nine millimeter, forty five. You know, for testing that. For the, some of the twelve gauge stuff, it just it could be. You know, three times bigger and, and still not big, big enough. But you can also slice off pieces of it and make a sandwich, too. Well, yeah, uh, it's a little chewy, though. It's hard to digest. 7.5, I'm ready. All right, here we go. I think we had detonation on that one, like a diesel engine going off. Pretty so neat. Nine millimeter up here, seven five down below, and I mean, look at that wound track. That thing's crazy. Yeah, that's maybe on, flip it almost... around and see if we can get some better angles to show the the viewers. And it's clearish. You know, maybe looking down on it, you can see it here. Yeah, I don't know. I guess these little spooji marks. Um, the the nine millimeter leaves a very white track through here. Down here below, let me pull it out in the sun a little more. No, 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 no. No, I can see it really good. I, I'm trying to cover re oh, okay. cover the reflection with my body. The, <laughs> as long as that's the only thing you're covering with your body. <laughs> yes. Down below it, you can see a, a decent, I mean, a huge size wound track with little tiny, there's there's a copper jacket and lid in, in the wound track. And then it's zipping out here in a nice bright piece right here and exiting. But let Man. Me, let me show you what's kind of cool. Okay. The entrance of this thing, here's a 9 millimeter, or actually, I'm sorry, here's that 9 millimeter round. Yeah. This was a 12 gauge. Yeah. That's the 7.5. Perfect little pencil hole. Okay. That's where the smoke was like ejecting out. Yeah, farting little smoke. That's yeah. That's a mouse first. Yeah. And then over here, that's its little exit hole. Okay. That's 9 millimeter over here. Little, little tail. And then, you, it never hurts to get a little tail when you're out here. <laughs> And then look at this. This is exactly how we found this. We haven't touched this. That 7.5. This is the first one I think we've captured intact. Can you pull it out of there? In the wild. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, In the wild. The, um, now I've lost oh, it. Oh, it's right here. there. The, the copper jacket came off of the lead core. So there's your copper jacket and there's your lead core. So it's small. It's uh, It almost looks like a, well, it almost looks like a 32 because those are almost the exact same dimensions. Yeah. There, there's the base of the round. Smaller than a 9mm. But impressive to make it through there and get stopped by yeah. four layers of uh, Kevlar. Yeah. Four layers of 3A, which is 12 AAA <laughs> mathematically. Okay. Oh my gosh. So, that was neat. Cool. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm cool. glad we, it was the first time we ever caught a detonation going off. It's uh, like, like I said, a diesel engine expands, come out because that big hole it made sucked in enough air, went in on a compression stroke. There was still enough heat there to detonate it. Whoop, and it, you can, it's, hear, it's, you can hear it in the background still. Yeah, it's echoing. Now, our block of clear ballistic gel is showing its age, but it's still very useful for testing. The 90 millimeter just managed to make it through that 16 inch block and created a nice temporary wound cavity. Now by contrast, the 7.5 FK created a temporary wound cavity 
nearly twice the size of the 9mm. And then we saw the detonation occurring there and it created a, another temporary wound cavity. Normally you would only see that with higher velocity rifle rounds. And even that doesn't happen very frequently. All right, this is a highly scientific test here, folks. We're gonna shoot two cans of Bob Ross positive energy drink with one with a nine millimeter and one with the 7.5 FK round. This one's already started to uh, leak a little bit. It tastes like liquid toothpaste or something. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's, what is it, loaded with quaaludes or something? It's blue. Yeah, it's probably loaded with quaaludes. Look at that guy. <laughs> Who anyway, knew they made that? My daughter's boyfriend Sergio got me these after uh, after a certain video over on the OG's Danger Show, and uh, said we need to blow these things up. So let's put them down range and see if it gives us an idea of the explosive energy of a nine millimeter versus a seven five. Okay, I'm ready. All right, I'm gonna try and hit Bob Ross. Bob in the nose. Wow, big difference. It's quite a difference. Big difference. It just vaporized that thing. Now I admit this is kind of a silly test, but it also shows you the difference between the hydroshock or the hydrostatic shock of a 9mm and compare it to the hydroshock of a 7.5 FK. The 9mm did pretty well. We saw a lot of larger size droplets, but the 7.5 FK, by comparison, just vaporized the fluid in that can. Now we like to keep things fun and maybe bring a couple laughs to you and hopefully teach you something. All right, I don't know about you guys, but we were pleasantly surprised with this pistol. Not only is it a, a pretty amazing uh, weapon here, but a very amazing around uh, for what it'll do for the package it'll come in so we wanted to compare it today to nine millimeter because that's a very common round that everybody around the world is kind of familiar with so we wanted to shoot it side by side with a nine millimeter today but we want you guys to tell us down below some things this is gonna be a long-term cast member here it's gonna be back for a lot of videos so if you have any suggestions of what we should shoot it against side by side. Remember, it'll shoot 40 caliber rounds. It'll shoot 10 millimeter rounds. And uh, give us some ideas of what we should compare it to for uh, damage and power and all that. So overall, we're very impressed with the FK Burno. We thank very much Mr. Elvis Ray for sending this out to us to test. And uh, we plan on keeping it around and putting it through its paces out here. So now, now I believe I heard that you're going to do a comprehensive Kind well, of review about it, maybe on your channel. As it turns out, Jeffrey, I have filmed. If you're if you're more interested in the pistol and less interested in blowing up pumpkins, um, I have filmed a very uh, detailed video about disassembly and what makes the thing work and all of its features over on OG's Danger Show. We also shoot some stuff over there, of course. But if you want to know a little bit more about this pistol and its history, um, I go into the history of the of the factory and the history of the country and. Uh, history of this pistol and how it came to us so be sure to check out the FK Burno 7.5 PSD pistol video over on OG's Danger Show. When is that gonna come out? By the time you see this folks it will be out. <laughs> okay. We don't want we know no you No waiting. You can just go over there right now. You we won't be able you. to poop you won't poop you have to poop yourself. Don't stop this video yet. Wait till it finishes but the very next video before you get the desecration ranch or Edward Sarkissian's grandpa's Lamborghini Maybe go over there and check out the uh, the FK video. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun pistol to have around. It's a very useful pistol. I'm a backpacker and uh, will shortly be living in cross country ski area. And for something like this to be able to be, you know, mounted in a pouch or something for for hunting or backpacking, that's a that's a badass little pistol. So we very much appreciate them sending it out. We appreciate you guys watching. I hope you liked it. It's something new, something a little different, and uh, we'll shoot it against some other calibers here very soon. We'll see you guys on the next video. Boo. Boo.